Cyprus. Mr. President, I'm very happy to meet you. It's a great honor for me. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. The Foreign Minister. And Ambassador Jack There we go. Good morning. <laughs> and this is the son of the President. Well, good to see you. And of course, Ambassador Perry. Good morning. Have to be 
seats in your states, and I commend your efforts to make the Republican Party the majority party at the state level. I think that's vitally important. As governor of California, I had a Democrat majority against me in both houses for seven out of the eight years that I was governor, governor and how much more we could have accomplished if we had, had the votes. I can't resist giving you one little hint of what the difference made in that one year when due to a couple of special elections we got a bare majority. Well, that gave us the chairmanship of the committees. That year we passed 41 anti-crime bills. None of them knew. All of them had been buried in the committee under the Democratic majority and the Democratic chairman. When we brought them out to the floor, nobody dared vote against them. <laughs> well, Republicans must gain a majority in the states as well as at the Congress, if we're to continue the progress we've made under this administration. Getting a fair shake in the reapportionment process is critical, and due to gerrymandering, the GOP is under strength in the Congress as well as in the state legislatures. We can gain 15 to 25 seats in the Congress if we get fair redistricting. If we have a good year in 1992, when that takes place again, we could gain control of the House. And imagine what good we could do with a Republican speaker and a Republican committee chairman. In California in 1984, the Republican candidates got a majority of the votes cast for Congress statewide. A majority of the votes. They won only 42% of the congressional seats. That is gerrymandering really at work. Phil Burton, who brought plan out to California from the Congress and boasted that the congressional district lines were his contribution to modern art. <laughs> and they were. The Democrats have controlled the House of Representatives since the election of 1954. Eisenhower had just two years with the Republican House and Senate. I had six years with a Republican Senate, and we couldn't have accomplished any of the things that we have if it hadn't been for that, at least that one house. And I want George Bush to have a Congress that'll work with him and not against him. But I said for 34 years, that was back but before there was a Republican uh, in both houses. But let's take it a little longer. 56 years, as of now, the Democrats have held the House of Representatives for 52 of those 56 years, that four that I mentioned, two years in Ike's term and two years in Truman's. And they've had both houses, because of the six terms that I had a Senate, for 46 of the 56 years. I, you know, I know you're doing what you can to elect more Republicans in the states, and I want to help. Because success is so important, I've asked Ed Rollins my 1984 campaign manager to make a donation to your legislative election committees from the 1984 campaign treasury. And tell them it's a token of how important I think your struggle is. <laughs> uh, go home and win one for yourselves, and win one for your states and for the Republican Party, and uh, I can't resist. Yeah, I can. <laughs> win one for the gift. Yeah. <laughs> is going to win. The Democrats are in for a rude surprise. And I thank you, and I want to hear your reports, and from here on it's going to be lunch, and we can talk with our mouths full. <laughs> Frank, down, down the telly, thank it's you. all yours. Thank you, Mr. President. I'm on behalf of while reapportionment does not take place for two more years, important elections at the state level that affect that reapportionment takes place this year, 1988. 
All of the chambers represented today are up for re-election in 1988. And so on election day, it's important not just the, that we win the White House, but that as many state representatives from these key states as possible are elected. And that's the purpose of our meeting today, is for you, as you've often expressed an interest in this subject, to hear. This Grant Village is the area where we evacuated people because we feared the fire would come in. And when I was out there, they, we had 50-some fire trucks there to fight the fire, keep it off of Grant Village. We have wood roofs. The, the woods are so dry that it's drier than kill-dried lumber. Now, when I went out there, I was, I had exactly the same reaction you did. You mean we're, we're going to burn up Yellowstone National Park because it's our policy not to fight fires? Well, it turns out, I say it the other way. We do fight wildfires <coughs> in the park. And a wildfire is any fire that they haven't got pretty good control of. So we have 3,000 firefighters in the park. This fire is way away from any habitation, and we're basically letting it go because we don't have the resources. We would have to pull resources from the timber fires all over the West to try to contain that fire. We think it's, it's coming under control on its own. This fire, we've had very substantial protection. And we built, I was out there, I saw them building backfires out here to try to stop this blaze, as they say, the education business. Uh, when an area like that is marked on, on the map as a fire, it, it, in fact, doesn't burn everything in it. This is a complete burnout. This will become an alpine meadow. This area here, as you can see, a lot of dead trees are in here. These are hanging in there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. just stole it all away from him. <laughs> well, listen, uh, let's get done with this. Uh, the welcome to all your comments here and the discussion among all of us, but uh, just a couple of things here with regard to the drought. <clears throat> I think we've got to do everything we can to stay as close to $4 billion as possible to prevent a sequestration under Graham Rutland. And then there's a little matter of of uh, the drugs and that task force that we proposed be put together, which hasn't been called together because the Democrats have refused to nominate or offer two participants. I just, I'll leave it to you to just think over yourselves whether there wouldn't be an advantage if we called a meeting of it without them and then made it very evident that they were invited and have refused to participate in this program. And I'll leave that. They've certainly had enough notice. Yeah. So I'll leave that to your judgment. And uh, from there on, uh, gentlemen, the meeting is open. Well, I just covered two or three things. Uh, I think we're getting down to the fire on one of the votes in the Senate to sustain the veto. And we did make eight changes on the Senate side. It was not quite the same. It seemed to me there might be some high ground again there. If you let that become law and then challenge us to get you a trade bill in the next uh, three weeks on the... Uh, My husband, Judge Harry Leinenweber, your appointment and a Reagan delegate in 1980. And his son, my stepson, Hello, Justin. Nice to see you. Isn't he wonderful? Yes, he <laughs> you does. are lovely, by the way, to do this. Well, I'm very pleased to. Why don't you stay in the middle? Why don't you move in? Why don't you know you come in front? Could I ask a picture with the three gentlemen? I think that'd be pretty nice. Well, Justin had a picture when he was 18 months old then with you. you will come back. I will. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I will. Now, You're so nice to do this, well, really. I'm very pleased to. Okay. After all, the representative from my home district in Illinois, where I grew up, <laughs> is right He's here. also a Cub fan, Justin. Mm -hmm. Yes, I used to broadcast their games on radio. This is his first trip, Mr. President, to Washington. Justin's never been here before, so he's he's relatively thrilled he's getting to meet you, I think. My pleasure. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Thank President. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Mr. President, you can't know how I hate to do this, but remember, I am from your district. Uh, these well, are, remember. you know, these are they from your district, and my office said, could you... They're for the people that support you most. I hate it. I hate it. No, I hate no. it. There's four of them. Four of them. I've got to get up here on the desk. Oh, you? thank you. <laughs> I'm well, suppose. Well, we'll do it over here. I hate to write on the lady. <laughs> I'll just put this regards. One of them were for me, Mr. President. Hi, B. I'm glad the judge Another Illinois. <laughs> yeah. I'll put him on there we go. Well, because, Mr. President, I promise to your supporters. Yes, there are five. You know, in Dixon, they believe you should be president for life. They just uh, feel that that's, uh, they don't see any need for a new election. You remember, George Washington said that shouldn't happen. I know. <laughs> I guess it was a Republican bill, wasn't it, too, that uh, said FDR. There we go. Yep. It was revenge. This is all you wanted to do in an afternoon, wasn't it, yeah, Mr. You're duly embarrassed. Oh, right. <laughs> I just would like to die. Not at all. <laughs> yes, it does. This is tacky. <laughs> thank you. Please Sir, to thank it. you. Please to do it. Right. <laughs> Mr. President. Outside there, inside the door. Thank you. Thank you. You think you might take that to school? <laughs> Thank you.